Would you take an alien into your home? It sounds like a party political broadcast by the BNP, but it isn't um, because I'm not sure that I would. I mean, you could find out that their extraterrestrial biology does some pretty odd things. I mean, what if the beast fully molted all of its fur off in like an hour? That would require a lot of hoover maintenance. And what if, you know, he got ill due to our unusual terrestrial bacteria and one of his eyes swelled to the size of a living room. Where would you go for help exactly? You can't share your settee with a 12 foot wide eye and its whimpering owner, can you? It might just like explode and cover you with outerworldly optic fluid that turns your face skin into a substance that sort of is quite undescribable, but would probably best be describable if we could describe it as a cross between peanut cracknel and Shiba Inu tongue. That is not for me. You can go and live with someone else, Alf. Debuting in 1986, or rather crash landing in 1986, you see what I did there, Gordon Shumway is an outer towner who finds himself hiding out in the suburban household of the Californian middle-class Tanner family. The family make a promise to Gordon to protect him from the probing clutches of the US Air Force. And so he hangs out like a wisecracking Harry and Frank, downing beer and eyeing up the delicious meaty flanks of every cat in the neighbourhood. It's not long until the charismatic Melmac immigrant squirms his way into the Tanner's hearts. And they give him a nice acronymic name based on his status of being an alien life form. That, of course, being ALF. ALF was incredibly popular for a short period of time, notching up four series and a total of 106 episodes. And, of course, becoming one of the first touchstones of everyone's Remember the 80s, eh? Remember the 80s? Nostalgia. Brain blankets. Brain blankets. So cosy. Keep me away from the modern times. And, yes, it ended with a cliffhanger of ALF being taken by the feds but no that wasn't the end of alf not only was there two animated series but there was also a direct sequel one-off movie showing alf alive and well and living at the airbase so no alf wasn't torn apart by inquisitive scientists no not even hell he even made a sort of comeback in the mid 2000s with a talk show but none of these comebacks have got close to the success of the Melmachians' cat-bothering first attempt at stardom. Such was Alf's ubiquity in merchandise apparel and even German pop albums that it comes a slight surprise to me that only two proper video games exist of Alf, and not on systems you'd expect. So yes, there was one early adventure called Alf's First Adventure on the PC, Atari ST and Commodore 64 where you must steer Gordon's Melmachian bonts around a street maze full of felines. And then there's this, the game that we're playing today. The Nexa developed Master System title simply called Alf. There were... Also a couple of PC edutainment titles too, but I'm not about to get a learning from a puss-chewing reprobate from beyond the stars. No thank you, sir. I do find it incredibly surprising, given the worldwide appeal, that an ocean, an alternative or a high-tech didn't snap up the ALF license for a UK 8-bit micro-platformer or something. And it's even more astonishing to me that there's an ALF game on Sega's console of the time and not Nintendo's pale grey lunchbox. It's incredible to me that this didn't make it onto the old NES. Oh no! So yeah, in this, ALF is forced from the safe enclosure of the Tanner household into the suburban terror of upstate California, with only his hairy frame and his wiles to get the parts he requires for his spaceship. And the one thing I think of when I look at Alf in his full form here in this adventure is I bet his bum fur looks disgusting after he's eating a dodgy cat that didn't agree with him. Yeah, win it. 
quite why he's decided to go and find spaceship parts now as opposed to the previous four years of his life on Earth, I don't know. Apparently he wants to go and meet some of his pals on Mars, which has given him a bit of motivation. If I were the Tanner family, I'd have been miffed that after all his leeching, he could have just simply completed a quest in less than half an hour and sodded off home. His spacecraft will require to go on a quest, finding parts from all over the neighbourhood, and will take him through a plethora of dangerous vistas and locales, all while being pursued by the alien task force and being beset by local life, both wild and human in nature. The first real struggle Al faces is twatting bats with a salami in order to get a gold nugget from a shack in a cave that the Tanners have never realised was in their basement. This isn't TV show accurate, this. The salami, yes salami though, has the range of an acting class from Dean Gaffney. You can swing it around willy-nilly and you might hit the bats or you might not hit the bats. It is already starting to look like a miserable experience with this ALF console game. After finding a few items around town and in the Tanner's house, you'll then take the hairy chap into an incredibly deep pond in the Tanner's back garden that contains treasures for young Gord to spend on quest items at the local high street. The Tanners apparently, although they didn't show it in the series, lived in a Goonies style pirate's cove or something. The high street is perilous too, with dogs, agents and cyclists determined to send our friend Alf to his grave. It's fairly easy to dodge them, just sort of walk down the middle of the road. It's another big example of the developers not taking a lot of time or using a lot of talent to make this game. Alf must then fly into space on his weird scooter thing, dodging air and space detritus to head to the moon to get a spaceship repair kit. Whereupon the game ends. That's it. The whole game, should you know where you're going and you can put up with its various quirks, can be wrapped up in 20 minutes. You won't do it on your first go because several encounters in the game are exercises in absolute frustration due to the poor controls, the absolutely abysmal collision detection and the erratic motion of the adversaries. If I'm being kind to Alf, it plays sort of like a much smaller low-rent Jack the Nipper from the ZX Spectrum 48K. Baddies will randomly appear on the side of the screen, leading to unfair deaths as well. It's a shoddy product all round, in all honesty. It's not as poor as Generation Pixel's favourite TV game of all time, The Flintstones, but it's not far off. You don't watch paint dry like in that game, but Hell's Bells playing it sure feels like you're watching paint dry. The music is a series of looped ear hate, there's no sexy saxophone theme tune from the TV series and there's absolutely zero in the way of sound effects. The graphics are pretty colourful but they are very simplistic in both look and especially in animation. It's not a very good game this. It's poorly thought out, it's poorly conceived, it's poor all round. A low point for the Sega Master System, if I ever saw one. What a shame that my first Sega Master System exclusive review is of this. But these are the choices that I make. Sega Power said in their issue 49 that ALF was pure undiluted swill. Well, I mean, at least it's undiluted. If it was diluted, it would spread more easily and probably unlock a few more smells. So maybe that's a good thing. But no, it's not. They gave it one star. Sega Pro gave it a 16 and said, spend 30 quid on this and you'll feel like a real um, spaz. Jesus Christ, Sega Pro. You're going to get me thrown off YouTube. It's the early 90s. It's the early 90s. It's contextually okay to say it. Don't worry. I wonder, though, what Sega Pro 
would make of its going rate today? What would they call you if you went out and spent £500 on this as it's being advertised on eBay? That would unlock new levels of unspeakable slurs, I'm sure. So anyway, yes, that's it. That's ALF. Don't buy it. Don't play it. Don't even look at it. It's disgusting. Next time out, how about we look at Sean the Sheep? He's Sean the Sheep. He's Sean the Sheep. Until then, like, subscribe. Okay, thanks. Bye.